Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this modular arithmetic for cryptography part 5 video, I'll be discussing primitive root modulo, primitive root modulo using a common method and count of primitive roots using Euler's Torsion function. So let's get started. Primitive root modulo or simply primitive root, when we call a number primitive root, so any positive integer number a is a primitive root modulo of a prime number p if it satisfies the two condition first a is smaller than p and a is co prime to p and second condition all the relations is starting from a to the power 1 mod p to a to the power p minus 1 mod p should return distinct outputs or numbers that is very important distinct outputs or number so let's look at an example we need to find all primitive roots of a prime number 5 First, we need to find all co-prime numbers to 5 and they are 1, 2, 3, 4 and here we need to check each number whether it is a primitive root or not. Let's check A equals 2. Check first condition 2 is smaller than 5 and 2 is co-prime to 5. That is correct. Then check second condition and calculate 2 to the power 1 to 4 mod 5 values. So we start with power 1 that is 2 to the power 1 mod 5 is 2. Then 2 to the power 2 mod 5 is 4. Next 2 to the power 3 mod 5 is 3. Finally 2 to the power 4 mod 5 is 1. Now let's check all the output and they are all different. So our second condition is true. Therefore 2 is a primitive root modulo of 5. Here in condition 2 we have rewritten the relation a to the power 1 to p minus 1 mod p and some examples of prime numbers and their primitive roots. Primitive roots are very useful in cryptography. We will use them in Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. Now we'll discuss the method to find primitive roots. Just to let you know, there is no simple method or general formula to compute primitive roots. So we'll use the common or naive method, which is to consider all co-prime numbers in range 1 to p minus 1, and then check if each one is a primitive root or not by calculating all its power to see if they are all different. However, we can use Euler's torsion function to easily compute the total count of primitive roots for a prime number which we will discuss it later. Here we will use the previous example of finding all primitive roots of a prime number 5 and go through the complete process. As p is 5 so find all the co-prime to 5 which are 1, 2, 3, 4 then check each co-prime number whether it is a primitive root modulo of 5 or not. For this we need to calculate a to the power 1 to 4 mod 5 for each co-prime number and if any value of a returns all distinct outputs or numbers then it is a primitive root of 5. So let's check it one by one. So let's start with the value a equals 1 and check whether a equals 1 is a primitive root modulo of 5 or not. For a equals 1 will calculate a to the power 1 to p minus 1 mod that is 1 to 4. So start with 1 to the power 1 mod 5 that is 1. Then 1 to the power 2 mod 5 that is 1 again. 1 to the power 3 mod 5 that is 1. And 1 to the power 4 mod 5 is 1. And now look at all the outputs. And they are all same. So it doesn't satisfy the second condition. Therefore, 1 is not a primitive root modulo of 5. So let's look at next number, a equals to 2. Now we need to calculate 1 to p minus 1 again, and that is 1 to 4. So start with 2 to the power 1 mod 5, and that is 2. Then 2 to the power 2 mod 5, that is 4. Next, 2 to the power 3 mod 5, that is 3. And 2 to the power 4 mod 5, 
equals 1. Now let's look at all the outputs and they are all different. So it satisfies the condition and therefore a equals to 2 is a primitive root modulo of 5. Now we'll continue for each number. So next number is a equals 3. So we need to calculate all the powers 1 to p minus 1 that is 1 to 4 again. So 3 to the power 1 mod 5 that is 3. 3 to the power 2 mod 5 that is 4. 3 to the power 3 that is 2 and 3 to the power 4 mod 5 1. So let's look at all the outputs and again they are all different. So 3 is a primitive root modulo of 5. Finally check the last co-prime number a equals 4 and calculate 4 to the power 1 to 4 mod 5. So start with power 1 and 4 to the power 1 mod 5 is 4. Next 4 to the power 2 mod 5 is 1. Next 4 to the power 3 mod 5 is 4. Last 4 to the power 4 mod 5 is 1. Let's look at all the outputs. And they are not different. Therefore, 4 is not a primitive root modulo of 5. This is how we need to check all co-prime numbers one by one. Alternatively, we can write the complete process in the table format. Here, for each value of a, we can write its result of mod for a to the power 1 mod 5 to a to the power 4 mod 5. So, let's look at a equals 1. All the values are same. Therefore, it's not a primitive root. A equals to 2. All values are different. Therefore, it is a primitive root. A equals 3. Again, all values are different. Therefore, it is a primitive root of 5. A equals 4. Values are repeating. Therefore, it is not a primitive root of 5. Finally, 5 has two primitive roots, which are 2 and 3. So this is how we calculate primitive root modulo of any prime number. If we want to count all the primitive roots of a prime number n, then we can do it very easily using Euler's torsion function. And the formula is phi of phi n. And if the number is prime, that is the case here, then phi of phi n is n minus 1, we already know. So, the final formula for counting all the primitive root is phi of n minus 1. Let's look at some examples. n equals 5, prime number. So, n minus 1, 4. And now count primitive roots, that is 2. And let's look at the table. So, here n equals 5, torsion function 4, and count of primitive root 2. Let's look at another example. n equals 11. So, n minus 1, 10. And again, calculate torsion function of 10, that is 4. So, let's look at the table. n equals 11 and torsion function 10 and count of primitive root 4. Let's look at another example. n equals 13. So, 13 minus 1, 12. And calculate again, 5. So 5, 12, 4. And now look at the table for 13. So n equals 13, torsion function 12, and count of primitive root 4. So this is how we calculate count of primitive roots using Euler's torsion function, and it's very easy. This concludes my presentation, and thanks for watching my video.